August 29, 2020. Elon Musk holds a press conference to bring the world up to speed on Neuralink, a neurotechnology company he takes full credit for founding in 2016, despite having absolutely no training or education in medicine or neurological devices. Truth be told, we've been waiting for this press release because the Neuralink claims Musk made on the Joe Rogan experience May 7, 2020 raised a huge number of red flags. So we gave him a chance to walk back the insane claims he made in May, but instead he restated them and even exaggerated them. And like the trained poodles they are, so many news media reporters rushed to publish these outrageous claims on his behalf once again without fact checking. So we're going to demonstrate at least a little of what they should have found before they hit send. We're also going to do what the presser did not do, and tell you who is who when it comes to the people on that presentation panel, and who the actual founders of Neuralink were, because Musk did not do this on his own. During the live Q&A, Musk trotted out 13 people in masks, some in scrubs, to answer questions if the questions fell within their purview. Most of these people were never properly identified, so allow us. Sam Baker is the doctor of veterinarian medicine. He is the attending veterinarian. Autumn Sorrells is an animal care program director specializing in behavior. Zach Tedoff, MEMS fabrication and process engineer. Felix Deku, PhD, director of microfabrication. Max Hodak, a technologist who specializes in brain machine interfaces for primates. Matthew McDougall, chief neurosurgeon. Robin Young, mechanical engineer that came from Tesla. Joey O'Doherty, PhD, neural engineer specializing in neuroprosthetics. An unidentified male whose name it seems was never mentioned during the entire presentation. Paul Morella, PhD, he is the lead chip designer. Ian O'Hara, director of robotics. Don Jing Sa, PhD, director of implant services. And Daniel Adams, PhD, principal investigator and neuroscientist. Towards the middle is Musk. He's kind of like the Howard Wallowitz of this panel. You're a doctor, you're a doctor, you're a doctor, you're a doctor, and Howard, you know a lot of doctors. <laughs> Not a doctor. Notably absent at this important news conference would be the listed CEO of Neuralink, Jared Birchall. We're going to be referring to many of these people throughout this episode, so these introductions should help keep everybody on track. What is Neuralink? It is a neurotechnology company Musk claims to have single-handedly founded. On Wikipedia, the CEO is listed as Jared Birchall, and the president is Max Hodak. They are listed as the only other people of note, other than owner, Elon Musk. However, buried in the article also is the list of original founders, and we're going to come back to them shortly. Max Hodak, the company president, is a biomedical engineer who graduated from Duke University in 2012 after a five-year program. He worked in the lab of Miguel Nicolelis as an assistant building brain-machine interfaces for primates, and upon graduation he founded Transcriptic, which is a robotic cloud lab that serves academic labs at schools such as Stanford, Harvard, and UCSF. By January 2017, he and the other co-founders created Neuralink, where he is currently listed as president. In the world of neurotech, Max Hodak is the real deal. Created Transcriptic from nothing using crowdfunding, Forbes Top 30 Under 30 in healthcare, and a White House champion of change in 2013. And yet, he sat quietly at Musk's right hand during the presentation as if he were just another obedient employee, referred to only as Max. Jared Birchall, the company's listed CEO, however, is a completely different story. The noticeably absent CEO of Neuralink apparently comes from the world of finance, having at one time been the senior vice president of personal wealth management at Morgan Stanley. But since March of 2016, Birchall has been the managing director of Musk's personal family office called Accession LLC, which is a name Musk ripped off from science fiction author Ian M. Banks. On LinkedIn, Birchall's association with Neuralink is not even disclosed, neither is Accession, and there's probably good reasons for that. If you recognize the name Jared Birchall from past news releases, it's probably from when Birchall, who is also known as Jared Brickhouse, was named in Musk's pedo guy lawsuit from last year. Birchall was the person who paid $50,000 to a private investigator to dig up dirt on Vernon Unsworth, who was the hero leading the Thai cave rescue of 2018 that saved 12 young soccer players and their coach from the flooded Thai cave. Musk's publicity stunt of providing an unworkable rescue sub for this operation was rejected, and justifiably so, by Unsworth. 
and Musk got his feelings hurt. Apparently lashing out at this international hero on Twitter by accusing him of being a pedophile was perfectly justified in Musk's narcissistic mind, an action that he had to defend in a well-publicized court case, the ruling of which is now being appealed, and we certainly hope that Vernon Unsworth wins this next round. Other than being mentioned in the pedo guy lawsuit in the partially completed LinkedIn profile, Jared Birchall might as well be a ghost. Hardly any other mention of him anywhere on the web. The only pictures of him online are leaving the courthouse during that trial and his profile pic on golden.com. There are more pictures online of this guy and this guy. According to filings, Birchall, along with his title at Neuralink, has his fingers in a half dozen ventures including being president of Musk's boring company, which seems to be where all of the Musk land holding companies are filtered through and an LLC called Bushwhacker that is partially controlled by Magnolia Wealth Management. When you check CorporationWiki.com regarding the companies he's involved with, it really looks more and more like a spider's web of shell companies. Foundation Security, for example, is mentioned in a single article as running armored car services, but there seems to be no other evidence that that company exists. What expertise Birchall could bring to any of these tech companies using the Bachelor of Arts diploma from Brigham Young University that took him seven years to get is questionable. And it seems more likely that Mr. Birchall is simply Musk's eyes and ears in the building rather than providing any meaningful direction or instruction to the teams of PhDs working at Neuralink, which would explain why, if Birchall was even in the room at the press gathering, he was not mentioned. Similarly, Musk claims to be founder of Neuralink, but he has absolutely no experience in medicine or neurotechnology, so he has nothing to bring to the table. The other true founders listed on Wiki, however, are all stars in their respective fields. For example, Don Jin Sa sat second from the right end of the panel, referred to himself only as DJ. He graduated from Caltech, then pursued his PhD from UC Berkeley. He is a founder. Paul Marola has a Bachelor of Science from the University of Virginia, a PhD in Bioengineering from the University of Pennsylvania, and is a postdoctorate fellow at Stanford. He was a founder. And Max Hodak, who we've already discussed, was referred to only as Max during the entire presentation, despite being a founder and the current president of the company. So those three founders were all at the presentation, and none of them were properly introduced. There were also five original founders that were not there, because they're no longer with Neuralink. Ben Rappaport is currently the resident neurosurgeon at New York Presbyterian Hospital. He graduated from Harvard Medical School in 2013 and also has a PhD from MIT. He was replaced as chief neurosurgeon by Matthew McDougall by December of 2017. Philip Sadez left Neuralink for his own startup this month, August 2020, taking his PhD from MIT and postdoctoral fellowship associations at Caltech and Salk Institute with him while continuing to teach at UCSF as a professor emeritus. Tim Gardner left in May 2019. He had a PhD in physics and biology from Rockefeller University to go along with his Princeton bachelor's degree in physics. He is currently teaching neuroengineering at the University of Oregon. Vanessa Tolosa, the only lady in the group and former director of Neural Interfaces, left Neuralink in February 2020 to use her PhD in chemical engineering acquired from UCLA to become a principal consultant for Mavato Engineering to develop Neurotech products. And Tim Hansen, with his Bachelor of Science from Cornell and PhD in Neurobiology from Duke, has chosen instead to use his talents to benefit HHMI Genelia as a senior scientist and research engineer. Nine people founded Neuralink, and the only person not an expert in their respective field was Musk. Five of them have since left a supposedly groundbreaking organization that's promised to change humanity, which has also raised hundreds of millions of dollars in funding rounds and grants. So you have to wonder, why might that be? Well, the answer most likely lies with Tim Hansen, who made the news on July 16, 2019, when he made a public statement through the MIT Technology Review that Neuralink was best suited for basic scientific research on animals and that a push towards human implementation was premature. 19 minutes later, just as Musk did with Vernon Unsworth, Musk took to Twitter to publicly discredit Hansen in retaliation for speaking up, dismissing him as a short-term employee that didn't work out, rather than the founder he was, ignoring the years of hard work that Hansen had put into the project. However, Hansen, being extremely accomplished in his field, fired back with his own claims aimed directly at Musk, 
accurately calling Musk a fake engineer and a fake founder of Tesla. Just as an FYI, Tesla was actually founded in 2003 by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenning, both of whom were rock stars in the automotive industry long before they met Musk. So this taking credit for other people's genius, that is a common trait with Musk. Despite Hansen being a founder and putting three years of work into the robotic surgery assistant displayed next to Musk during the August 2020 presentation, Tim Hansen apparently no longer wishes to have any association whatsoever to Musk or Neuralink. Thing is, Tim Hansen's name appears on two of the four patents currently assigned to Neuralink Corporation, and Musk's name does not appear on a single one. Other persons in the room whose names appear on the four Neuralink patents are Zachary Tedoff, Ian O'Hara, Robin Young, and DJ Saw. Other founders with their names on the patents that are no longer with the company, Timothy Gardner is on two of them, Philip Sabas is on one, and Vanessa Tolosa is on one. And then there's all these people as well. Camillo diaz Botia, who left Neuralink in January 2020, Supin Chen, who no longer associates himself with Neuralink on LinkedIn at all, Vikash Gilja, who left in June 2018 to teach. Kenny Sharma also removed his connection to Neuralink from his profiles. And Manuel Alejandro Mange Osorio, who may be the only one of these people still working at the company as an engineer, or if he's left, he hasn't updated his profile. Again, Musk's name does not appear on a single patent, and all these highly educated people who helped develop the technology that brought in the funding for this device left and that seems more than a little odd. Until you read this article recently released on Stat News, where you see the person positioning himself at the head of this program is the absolute last person who should be. Musk's extremely limited contributions to Neuralink seem to be obvious. He is the front man and self-declared visionary of the organization without giving any credit to the other founders who sit right next to him on the panel. Then, he completely over-exaggerates the capabilities of the device they're developing, and he allows articles like this to be written about him without having the slightest understanding what it is these scientists are working on. In fact, most of what Musk has claimed this device can do during this presentation, as well as on the Joe Rogan Experience interview last May, are nothing short of, well, the scientifically accurate term would be bullshit. We've been fortunate enough to have been filled in on some of the backstory and given fairly credible information by a neuroscientist named Joshua Moore, who is not only a specialist in the field of brain mapping, but he is also familiar with many of the key players in the early days leading up to the formation of Neuralink. He also spent some time, by invite, at the Neuralink campus in the visitor's capacity, learning about the device and its true capability from the people who actually understand this product. And that brings us finally to the actual presentation now that you know who the past and present players at Neuralink are, and we'll be able to keep track. That's going to end part one of this presentation. It's a little different to what we normally do, but we thought it was really important to understand the backstory and the people behind Neuralink, because there are some things about this company that are worth noting, and there's a lot of things that need to be dove into a little deeper, which is what we're going to do in part two, including going through all the claims made at the presser and on the Joe Rogan experience about what the Neuralink chip is actually capable of doing.